Hello and welcome. Thanks everyone for joining us for Keepsakes Declutter. All about decluttering sentimental items, how to honour the memories without the clutter. So awesome for you all to come along. Thank you. Great to see you here. Um, I'm just going to keep on moving on. If you want to ask some questions, just pop it in the chat as we're going along. We may have a bit of time for questions at the end, but would love to hear your thoughts throughout the session as well. Uh, let us know where you're joining us from. Are you here in Melbourne like me or are you on the other side of the world? We'd love to hear and what are you looking forward to learning today? What is it that's challenging about organising and decluttering memorabilia? And do you actually need to? Are you overthinking it? Or did somebody say you should get rid of that stuff? but you don't want to, how have you come to be here today to talk about your keepsakes and memorabilia? Pop it in the chat and let me know. And if you are watching this on recording, hello, thank you for watching. Uh, pop some notes in the comments because we do receive them uh, and we uh, on YouTube and we can reply to you. And if you've got any specific questions, again, we can reply through that as well. So keep the comments coming. Thanks, Linda. She's joining us from Seattle, Washington. Thank you, Washington State in the USA. Awesome. Thanks, Linda, for coming. Um, and let us flip over to the next screen, talking all about what to expect today in this workshop. Uh, my business space and time is all about conscious choices with how we use our space and our time. And that is so important when we're talking about memorabilia and keepsakes today. We want to make conscious choices about what we keep and what we let go. Just because it belonged to grandma doesn't mean you have to keep it. Just because it was yours when you were a teenager and uh, you know you loved it so dearly then, you don't have to keep it. If it's not serving you now, if it's not something that's uh, you know, making you happy and adding to your life right here in the present. Let's think about those things today. As I said, share your intention with us today. Share it in the chat. Let us know what you're here for. That'll help me to tailor the session today, but it also helps you to bring about changes in your life as well. You know, changes are uh, easier if you've got a clear intention of where you're going. You know, where is your roadmap taking you? And I've got a few more offers uh, to continue your decluttering and organising journey with us after the session today. This will be a fun session, but let's keep it going after today and I'll show you a couple of ways that you can do that. Thanks, Rebecca. She's joining us from Calgary, Western Canada, not far from Seattle. Very good. And my amazing assistant, Mary Lou, joining us from the Philippines. So thank you all coming from all places in the world. How amazing. So here we go, decluttering keepsakes and memorabilia. We're going to have a look at techniques to declutter and store memorabilia and keepsakes. Those sorts of things might include like your children's clothes or even your own clothes when you were longer, younger. Like I said, those little pieces of cloth and stitching and fabric can have such pull on our heartstrings, but do we really need to keep them? How about kids' artwork or some of your own artwork or study materials, notes from university, travel mementos and family heirlooms? We'll have a look at all those things and we will touch on photos today. That could be a whole new uh, workshop in itself, managing photos, but let's have a look at it today. And also looking at minimising keepsakes and the challenges along the way so that we're not tripping over them and them getting in the life, sorry, in the way of the life that we want to live. So we are going to go through the six steps of the space and time organizing system. If you've been to one of our workshops before, you would know that these are the six steps we often use to keep us on the straight and narrow, keep us moving forwards. Uh, we will go through these in detail, but just quickly to start with, the first step is stop the stuff. The second step in the space and time organizing system is your commitment to being organized. The third step, sort the stuff. Fourth step, things you long, no longer need. Fifth step, easy storage for your stuff. And the sixth step is maintenance. How can we 
bring all of these great things to life each and every day to help us declutter and get organized, not just a one-time thing. Just going back to the chat, chat quickly. Thanks, Linda. She says, I have cards, letters, mementos from high school and college 40 plus years ago. Let's talk about them uh, throughout the session. Thanks, Linda, for letting us know. So we are looking at the first step here, stop the stuff. So what is the big deal of too much memorabilia and keepsakes? Well, a big problem is when we have too much stuff of any sort is that we can't find it. Even if we know we have a postcard from grandma in 1985, we wouldn't have a clue where to find it. So it can be really overwhelming and frustrating if we can't find things. And if we are surrounded by keepsakes and memorabilia, we often have heightened emotions as we look around the place. And that can get a little bit tiring. We can be, um, you know, sort of the emotions of it use up a lot of energy and it can be exhausting. So let's have a think again about that happy medium between uh, displaying our precious things and being able to put some of them away so that's not so overwhelming. And of course, having lots of memorabilia and keepsakes takes up precious space that we might want to use for current day things. Maybe you like to do craft. Maybe you need an office space. Maybe the kids need a desk to do their homework. But if you've got too much of other people's stuff or things from the past hanging around, then it takes up this precious space. And of course, as we know, when we have a big task to tackle, indecision becomes paralyzing. Um, so we end up doing nothing at all. So these are some of the reasons we want to stop more memorabilia from coming in so we can overcome some of these challenges. Here are some actual steps to help us de uh, stop more things from coming in. So we want to think about travel memorabilia to start with, uh, you know, whether it's a magnet or a pamphlet or a sombrero or a pair of expensive Italian shoes, inevitably it doesn't see the light of day when you return home. Just don't forget that your home is a living space, not a storage space. So keep this in mind when you're out and about and you're tempted to buy that next trinket. So really be mindful. Is this thing, so if you're going for a trip overseas or even a trip to a, uh, a coastal town nearby, or just even up the, uh, up the street and you find something cute um, and, and it's a, a memorabilia sort of travel memento, just think, is it really going to add to your current life? Is it something that you're going to take home um, and cherish or is it just going to be put in the back of the cupboard never to see the light of, get, light, light of day again? Now, we absolutely do want to be remembered, reminded of some of these amazing occasions and trips. Our photos are really good at doing that. Um, postcards are really good at doing that. So smaller items, maybe key rings, although you don't want a huge collection of key rings either. Just be thinking about how is this thing that I've got in my hand that I'm thinking of buying, how is that going to add to my life going forwards? So uh, we're just taking a bit of an audit and thinking about how can we stop bringing more stuff into the home. And how about if you're going along to a, um, oh, sorry, this is hobbies and interests. I'm a step ahead of myself. Hobbies and inter interests. Uh, if you're going, say, to a craft fair, just be very mindful about what you pick up. We only have 168 hours in a week. I always laugh when I say that because I love to say it every time and I would love to be uh, paid a few dollars to say it every time because I've said it so often. We only have 168 hours in a week. How much time can we devote to hobbies? And um, so that, that can help you start to put some boundaries around how many hobbies we're doing at the same time, whether it's craft, singing, sewing, um, uh, you know, Tai Chi, whatever it might be. Um, because otherwise we can end up with rooms full of things, rooms full of craft work and no room to do it and actually no time to do it because we're too busy managing the crafting supplies and there's no time to do the crafting. So have a think about um, 
how many of these sorts of fun things we're doing at one time and don't get too carried away when we're getting more stuff to do that. Don't even worry about picking up the pamphlets on the next sewing project that's coming up or a pamphlet on another art course. Um, just be mindful again. Let's stop more stuff, stop more unnecessary stuff coming in. And you can just simply say no thanks if somebody offers you something like that. They'll go, oh, I know you do knitting. Here's all the knitting my grandma, uh, sorry, wool my grandma used to have. Would you like it? And sometimes they don't even ask, would you like it? They just give it to you. You can easily, politely say no thanks without a, a too many explanations. And if you're going out to a... Um, an expo, like I said, that craft expo or gardening expo, something like that, write down a list of things that you are interested in before you go out so that you can keep on track and you're not sidetracked because, yes, that hanging basket with all those beautiful things on it um, and here's the workshop to come along and do one of them it looks beautiful, but are you ever going to do it? Again, just be a little bit picky. Just pick the very best things for you um, and your current time right now. So this is talking about stopping more stuff from coming into the home. I hope some of those tips have been helpful when you're going out and about to special interest shows. How about heirlooms? And I'm going to say a few controversial things here about family heirlooms. Uh, these positions are so important to us um, and, um, and who we are. But these objects have intense memories embedded. But don't forget these items. So something of, I can't see anything of my families that I've got from them around the place. I'm a bit picky about what I choose to keep. But don't forget that the item is not your family member. So grandma's china vase is not grandma. Yes, it does remind you of, of her and it reminds you of special times, but the item is not your grandma. The memories are in your heart and in your mind, but the, the memories are not actually in the item. So have a think about that with family heirlooms. If somebody in the family offers you something, again, you can easily just say, no, thanks. You don't need to give any explanation, um and ah, or feel really guilty about it. You are setting up your space for you and your family as your current immediate family and how you're living your life now rather than being stuck, uh, weighed down by other people's stuff. And don't forget, we always have the option of curating what we do choose of family items. We could just choose a few favourite pieces, not all pieces. We don't have to have the whole of Auntie Jan's um, uh, china cabinet. We could have just one tiny piece, one little mouse, one little plate that would remind us of Auntie Jan. We don't have to have everything that Auntie Jan ever owned. And remembering it's your choice. We are setting up your space, your home, your life, how you want to run it. So family heirlooms, if you love them and it's what you want to do, absolutely go for it. But sometimes there is a real fine line between living in the past and living in the current and setting up your future life. There's no point us tripping over our family uh, heirlooms that we've been given under duress that we don't really want when it starts to get in the way of you living the life that you want to live. So let me know what keepsakes and memorabilia have accumulated in your home we have had a couple of people share that with us already. Uh, Linda says about the cards, letters, mementos from high school and college. Um, so maybe some of those ideas that we've just spoken about, Linda, might be helpful there. Maybe you could keep some of the cards, keep some of the letters or mementos. Maybe you could, actually, I've got some more storage ideas for those sorts of things, so I won't jump too far ahead of myself. But hopefully some of these ideas are just starting to shift our perspective on those items. Please let me know if you completely disagree with what I'm saying. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Either unmute yourself and tell me I'm crazy or pop it in the chat. Let me know your thoughts in relation to some of these things that we've been looking at. 
All right, next step, we're going to look at step number two, which is your commitment to being organized. So there is no magic wand to decluttering and getting organized. Being organized takes focus and persistence and a real commitment to live that way. So again, let's challenge ourselves and think about why are we hanging on to this stuff? Are you hanging on to it for validation? You know, I'm a good person. Look at me. I've got this plaque on the wall. Or do you want to be reminded of happier times? Or is it a snapshot in history? Or is it family pressure? Why are you hanging on to this stuff? And is it relevant to how you're living your life right now? And as that second point there says is, are you hanging on to it for the right reasons? As I say, family pressure and feeling that should you are the oldest in the family, you should keep this stuff uh, is not a good enough reason for uh, for me to be hanging on to things. I don't want other people's stuff. Yes, I would love one of grandma's necklaces. I do have a couple of beautiful vases of my auntie Jan and uh, and a few things on my husband's side of the family, some silverware and a few things, but it really is only a handful of objects uh, I'm not interested in stepping over and filling up my home with other people's stuff. Again, do you agree with me? And here is a great way to show your commitment to being organized. And it doesn't matter if you're decluttering your keepsakes and memorabilia or if it's your paperwork or it's just the house in general. It needs to get in the diary and it needs to be small and it needs to be regular. So let's put just 10 minutes in the diary, um, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, 10 minutes, three times a day. I had a, somebody joining me, I think it was Sue, a few weeks ago on one of our sessions and she said she just committed to letting go of one bag of stuff for a whole year. So that's 52 bags of stuff. And she said sometimes she got a bit excited and got rid of more than one bag. But thinking about it, that's quite a bit of stuff just for one bag in a week. Make some sort of commitment like that to yourself. It might not be that much if we're talking about keepsakes and memorabilia. Depending, you might have a whole of your family's home that you are going through at the moment. Uh, but we want to get it in the diary, literally schedule time, just as you would to go to the doctor, to have a haircut, to catch up with a friend for coffee, get it in the diary and stick to it. Don't be swayed. Someone says, oh, I'm going to do this thing this afternoon. Say, no, I can't do that at the moment. I'm doing this thing. And say to them, maybe come and help me. Let's do this thing together. Uh, and the other thing is that second point there is I am not my stuff. You know, we are more than our possessions. We don't need our ribbons, uh, you know, the bright, shiny ribbons we are given from first, second, third place or participation when we were in our school sports in 1983. Uh, we are more than that. And we have developed so much since then. We are not our stuff. We are more than our possessions. But, you know, our memories are within us, as I said before, that not within our things. And sometimes holding on to stuff imprisons us and letting stuff go can be freeing. Just think it's for its service and say, bye-bye, thank you. But this point here, step two, is really about getting committed. I am going to start doing things differently in my home. I am going to start taking charge and I'm going to start small with 10 minutes a day and just start looking through items and deciding if they are really contributing to your current life. As I said before, there is no magic wand. We just want to break it down into tiny pieces and um, continue on the journey. As I said, we've got more workshops coming up in the next few weeks. We'd love you to come and join with us on there. Um, and if you have some other help that you need, I'll show some uh, details so you can get in contact with me at the end of the session and let's do an accountability session. Let's get on board. Let's be really committed to this process of um, decluttering and organizing. Uh, so as I said there, what the bottom point in blue, what's your reason for hanging on to stuff? Why do we feel like we need to hang on to that stuff from the past? Please share your thoughts. We'd love to hear them. Again, if you are disagreeing with me, you're going, Julie, what are you talking about? Please ask. And if there's something you don't understand what I'm saying in my Aussieisms, 
please let me know that too so I can explain myself. All right, let's have a look at step three, sort the stuff. I love this step. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, we might start with, um, so if we were looking through, say, a bundle of cards. I've done this a few times with um, some of my clients. I've held on to all their birthday cards, Christmas and everything for all of their life. Uh, and then um, we want to sit down and sort to decide which are those important ones and how can we let go of the ones that aren't so important. Like I said, all memorabilia is not created equally. So it really is amazing what, how a natural flow sort of starts to happen when you start this sorting process. So I'll give the example again of um, looking at a, a box of cards that you've collected over your whole life. When I was doing this with a client not that long ago, we started to sort by the who gave the, the client the card. So it was the Jones family, it was the Smith family, it was Auntie Jan, it was mum, it was, you know, the, the Bailey family. So we started to sort them. And as we were sorting them, we, we look at that going, I have no idea who these people even are. You know, if it's 20 years ago and it was from your Sunday school class and you've never seen them since, uh, that is something you could say, thank you so much, universe, for providing me these awesome friends at the time. But right now, right in my present day, that card does not mean anything to me. And that could be passed on, either um, pass it on to, to uh, somebody that's making other cards or just pop it straight in the recycling. So you, uh, that might be a way that you could start sorting some of the things that you've been hanging on to for a while at home. Depending on the category, as I said, who gave it to you, you could sort by year, um, you could sort by the location um, and, and just start that sorting process. Again, we're not deciding what we're keeping and what we're letting go at the moment. We are just sorting. We're trying to keep the emotion out of it and just put them into nice categories so it's nice and easy for our brain to start to process stuff. So you can sort your travel mo uh, memorabilia by year or by the country uh, and just again to get a sense of what you have before we start deciding what to keep and what to let go. If we we're sorting photos, we could just sort them by decade or family member. Again, sorting photos, a whole different kettle of fish. And there are expert professional organizer photo people um, and they could help you. And it, but it really depends on how long you want to spend sorting your photos. Uh, again, 168 hours a week. How much of that time would you put towards that project? And sorting kids' artwork, you could sort it by child. And I'm also going to show us in a second, if you do have kids or grandkids and they're bringing things home all the time, um, here is a little process that you could use. It's a bl bit of a blurry photo on the left there, sorry. That is a photo of mine. Not quite sure why it looks so pixelated. But if you've got kids' um, school or artwork or grandkids, whoever they might be, or even your own, you could sort of just grab the collection, start from the top and start sorting. You might go, um, well, this is on the left was my son Charlie's um, work from quite a few years ago, might have been grade five or something quite a few years ago. Uh, and we were just sorting. He was helping me put it into recycling like it might have just been a scrap piece of paper or just a squiggle on the page. It definitely keep like the bottom right hand stripey fox there. Tell me more about it. And we might have done a video or just had a conversation about it or and a pile or category number four unsure. So that was sort of how we went about sorting out the kids' schoolwork and artwork when they would bring it home at the end of each term. And I think it's really important to be able to do this regularly. Thankfully, more and more of the kids' stuff is online these days, so we haven't got the physical clutter, but doing it regularly so there's not such a huge pile to go through, you know, each semester, so halfway through the year and at the end of the year, categories like this might be helpful um, for you to just sort it again. We're not really – this is slightly different because it was um, – we were deciding to recycle some of it right there on the spot, but they were easy decisions. 
but this is really about sorting to help you make those decisions. So do you have lots of artwork at home at your house? Do you have the kids' artwork? Is it your own? Do you have your own school notes or university notes? Could this sorting process be helpful for you to decide what to keep and what to let go? Let's continue on to the decluttering step. This is step number four. So these steps are deliberately in this sequence. We started with stopping more stuff in so that we could eventually get to this step of tackling the backlog and starting to let things go. But it's really difficult to do anything when there's more coming through the front door. The second step, as I said, was your commitment to being organized. So let's really give it this a good crack. Third step was sorting that we've just done. And this has really helped us to get to this decluttering step. We just didn't open up a drawer and start throwing things out. We've had a bit of a process, got into the right frame of mind. We understand why we're doing this. We know we can't keep everything. And now here are a few ideas on how we can let things go. Now, I'm going to read this word for word because I always get tripped over the wording of this. This is some tips to overcome difficulties of letting go of gifts. I know people often say to me, oh, this is a wedding gift. I've never used it. It's like, well, please just let it go. But it was a wedding gift. Well, these are some questions you can ask yourself when somebody gives you a gift, whether it was just yesterday or 30 years ago. Let me read this to you. So put thinking about, close your eyes and have a think about this. So if some, if you gave someone a gift and they no longer wanted it, would you expect them to hang on to it? If you gave someone a gift, they didn't like it, perhaps it's not their style, not the right colour, they already have one, would you expect them to hang on to it? And if you gave someone a gift, would you expect them to keep the gift forever? So that's what I want you to be thinking about. And I would think that you would say no to all of those three things. No, I wouldn't expect somebody to hang on to it if they didn't like it um, or if they no longer wanted it. Or I don't think you would expect the person to hang on to that gift forever. And the same can be said in the reverse. So if somebody gives you a gift, you are not expected to hang on to it forever. If it is no longer useful, it is yours. The person gave it to you. It no longer belongs to them. You are free to let it go. You are free to do whatever you want with it. You can donate it. You can re-gift it. You can sell it. It is yours. It was a gift. So uh, that's a little bit of a tricky one. It can be a little bit confronting, but again, it is yours. It is your choice. What's your thoughts about that one? Let me know. Okay, let's continue on with things you no longer need. How about, could you change your perspective on your stuff? This is my son, Robbie, on the right-hand side. Uh, this is a few years ago. He's probably 15, 16 then. He was doing some of my social media for me, and he wrote a blog at the time for me about letting things go like a teenager. So let's have a think about his perspective and how we might be able to adopt the idea of letting things go like a teenager. So, uh, 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 yeah, is the item that we're looking at, whatever it might be, is it really important? Uh, sometimes we get stuck in our ways. We want to see if we can challenge ourselves now about hanging on to stuff and let go like a teen. So here are some of the main points that my son Robbie wrote about this little guy on the right, Captain Risky. So Captain Risky had been hanging around in our house for a while. He decided no, he didn't want it anymore. And so I asked him about it. And as I said, he wrote a blog and he says, well, it was actually acquired. It was given to us. He didn't go out and buy it. Uh, Captain Risky just turned up at our house. I think I picked it up from somewhere, thought it was cute, bought it home. Uh, but it wasn't something Robbie deliberately went out to purchase. And he, Robbie had actually outgrown Captain Risky. If he, Captain Risky had tattoos, he was dressed in black and he had a black crow on his shoulder. Uh, he may have had a bit more of a chance of hanging around for a bit longer, but he has been outgrown. You know, we do 
outgrow our items, literally like we can't wear our ski pants from when we were 10. Uh, but sometimes we just get over stuff. We, you know, we come in fads and cycles. Uh, we outgrow things. And Robbie says that nothing is forever when you're a teen. Uh, he often gives his room a good clear out once a month. And it seems that change in your mind is really important and having that control when you're a teenager. So maybe you can uh, come up with some of these ideas for yourself as well. Start thinking like a teenager. Yes, it's okay. I can change my mind. I have outgrown this. Nothing is forever. I don't want it anymore. Um, and let it go like a teen. Let me go back to the uh, chat Somebody has written me a little message. Come on, chat. Here we go. Thank you. Let stuff go by, by a teen. Sorry, like a teen. Mary Lou has put the whole uh, link to the blog there if you'd like to, to uh, read it. Thanks, Mary Lou, for sharing that. So just a different perspective. Nothing's forever. We don't have to keep it forever. All right, some other things to think about when we are letting things go that we no longer need. So have a good think, how do you want to live your life? Do you really want every square inch of your space crammed with space bags? I do know of somebody that lives not far away from here that kept every item of clothes their kids ever owned. And they were just squished up in those space bags and stuffed under in every crevice of the home. So there's no room for anything of their current items. Would you like to live your life like that or have a little bit more space? We we're talking about heirlooms before and how it's okay for you to say no. How, how about share the love, spread the love, share the heirlooms with your family members? Uh, we could also repurpose I, um, and upcycle things like jewellery and change them into something else. Use a photo frame, a photo Again, we'll talk about some of that in storage shortly, but maybe you might have some special things of somebody's that you could upcycle and use in a different way. And when we are letting things go, we could let go if there are multiples. And so if your mum had a big collection of holiday wreaths, but you don't have room for all of them, just keep, keep the very special one or two and you could display it during the holiday season. So again, you don't have to have all of Auntie Jan's dinner set. You could have just one or two pieces and you could just eat your breakfast from it every morning and, and think of those wonderful times you had with Auntie Jan. You don't have to have the whole dinner set or everything Auntie Jan ever owned. And don't forget about the donating. You know, donating is such an amazing thing to be able to do and pass it on to people that really need it. I was talking about that family that had all the kids clothes they'd ever owned they are literally babies and people just around the corner from you that would have no clothes or uh, outgrown their clothes so find some local charities nearby and pass them on to people that are in need rather than stuff them under your bed yes I should put that in there just remembering the the, the quote that I enjoy from around this is what's What's um, sentimental to you could be useful to somebody else. Again, those little babies' clothes are so cute, uh, but babies might need to wear them. So what is sentimental to you might be useful to somebody else. So have a think about that and pass it on. And this great quote here from Becoming Minimalist, there is far more joy in giving things away that can ever be found in only more. There is far more joy in giving things away than can ever be found in owning more. I hope that's helpful and helps you let things go you no longer need. I'm not talking about letting everything go that you've ever owned. It's okay to have things. I, I've got a virtual background, but I do have stuff. I've got books. I've got photos. I have things around my home, but it is still a fairly minimalist space, uh, but we're talking about letting things go that don't suit your purpose right now. All right, how about easy storage for your stuff? Step four in a space and time organizing system. Here are some tips and tricks to use for looking after storing 
and displaying your keepsakes and memorabilia. So how about you uh, display and honour the items rather than put them back in the cupboard? Because um, things are not going to be used when they're stuffed at the back of the cupboard and you don't even know where they are. I was saying, gave that example at the start. Oh, yeah, I've got one of them, but I've got no idea where it is. So honour them. Make a nice display cabinet. Perhaps not like this one that's got Academy Awards in it. I don't know where this has come from, but it's a beautiful display cabinet. But you could have something similar at home. I'll share you some downscaled versions in a second. Now, easy storage for your stuff is all about making it easy. It's easy to retrieve. It's easy to put back. And it has to be easy. If it's too difficult, if you have to climb for ladder, reach really high, pull down a box, move that box to the side and put that one in, that's not easy. Uh, we aren't honoring anything with that many steps. It needs to be nice and easy when we are organizing storage for our stuff at home. Here's another way we could um, honor our stuff and store some of our things. This is what is probably known as a memory blanket. This one looks like it's made up of little girls' dresses or jumpsuits or beautiful little bits of fabric of some sort, and it's got the person's name on it. Uh, perhaps you could do something like this. Either you could do it yourself or you might know somebody crafty that could sew something like this. I've seen it done with men's business shirts as well um and yeah kids jumpsuits costumes so you don't have to keep the whole item you could just make up something like this and use it and have it on your bed another way you could store your memorabilia is have a nice little trunk like this one I think this is a purpose actually it's bought this way but you could stick travel stickers on a box on a suitcase, uh, on a bag of some sort and keep your items in here. So again, we're just trying to contain it. We're not keeping everything we've ever owned. It's just a small collection of special travel memorabilia in this box. How about take a photo of it or scan the item and put it on your phone or computer as a screensaver? Or this is a picture I just took this morning. Um, of our Google Home Nest. This sits on our kitchen bench and just scrolls photos all day. Um, I need to update it. I do put them on there regularly, but I need to go backwards uh, and get some photos from when the kids are even smaller. That's Robbie there on the right, the photo I showed of my son Robbie before, who's quite a bit bigger than that now. So see if you could take photos of your bits of memorabilia, your people, your places, your um, your items as well and have them scrolling on something like this so that you're not forgetting them, they're close to your heart but you don't have to keep the whole item. Uh, kids' artwork or even some of your own artwork, have a look at these little photo or artwork frames. They, slide, uh, they swing open and you can interchange the artwork that's on it, easy to display and change the artwork once it gets full perhaps at the end of the week or something like that you could recycle it um, and let the items go but you've got some time to put those items on display for a little while it looks beautiful uh, similar to we talked about before taking a photo of the item then you could have it printed in a beautiful coffee table book I've seen some of my clients with some of these amazing things again do you want to spend time capturing your keepsakes like this does look beautiful. Uh, lots of different ways that you can print out your uh, memories in a beautiful book like this. And here is the downscaled version of that amazing cabinet we saw before with the uh, Academy Awards in it. You could make just a tiny one, a little display to some of your favorite people. We do have um, a China cabinet fronted uh, mid-century modern piece with just a few keepsakes from my family and my husband's family and some of the kids' artwork as well in there. Uh, so even something tiny like this little acrylic one might be all that you need rather than hanging on to everything that grandma ever owned.
uh, something cute like this little bunting that you can quite easily get at lots of different places. This one came from Kmart. Just has a little peg, put a photo in or put a postcard in, put the kids' artwork in. Just a lovely way to display and store some of your stuff that we have decided that you want to keep. And this is a uh, a picture of the kids' artwork and schoolwork that we would keep as well. This is 2020. Ooh. Yep. Oh, there it is. In um, so it's about two and a half, no, about five centimeters uh deep, A4 size. And this is all we would keep for the kids from one year of school. So it's got their school reports in it. Uh Again, this is from 2020, so it has a big list of lockdown dates that we had in Melbourne, which was almost every day of 2020. Um, it's got their school reports, school photos, uh, and then some just some snippets of their schoolwork. I showed you how we would sort the schoolwork and then decide and could only keep this much stuff, and that's what that photo is as well. So maybe... That's still a lot. Over 12 years of school, it's still quite a lot. But if anyone says, what was that kid's name in kindergarten? I know that the school photo is in that year so that we could go to that straight away and, and have that. And they can have that when they get older or I'll have it. We'll decide who wants it later. They probably won't want it, but it's just a little snapshot, setting a boundary around how we want to keep and how much of stuff we want to keep. Can you share in the chat now what have you enjoyed so far what have i missed i'm just going to put this thing back here where it lives um what have i missed because we still do have some time i can share some more things but what's been the best tip of the day and what's been the most confronting share those couple of things with us all right how do we make all of that we've just been talking about today, how do we make that a part of our daily life? Well, let's have a look at step six, which is maintenance tools. How can we carry on after today, remembering in our mind why we are doing all of this? So one way to do it is to be accountable. Share your decluttering and maintenance journey with a friend and update them frequently on your progress. I'd love to be your accountability buddy as well. Uh, we could have a weekly chat, a weekly ch check in on Zoom. We would try and make it at a good time of day so that you're not in the middle of the night or I'm not in the middle of the night, depending on time differences. We'd love to help that with you. I do have a gentleman that I've been working with for maybe nearly two years now. It's 10 minutes on a Friday morning and we have a chat um, to keep him accountable. What's he done in the last week? And what's he doing next week and just keep him going on his journey. The second point there says just start. You know, it will take you a little while to get used to your new routine, which is doing what organized people do. You know, don't just drop things in a pile, put them away. Uh, be really diligent about what you're bringing into the home in relation to memorabilia and keepsakes and travel items and all of those things. But soon enough, you'll get really good at this and it will be just second nature to you. But also use reminders, use your phone. I've had a million reminders already pop up today, I think. I've already, um, yeah, sort of scrolled away from them. But I use my phone often to help me keep on track, um, keep you in your routine and just do them as you're going along. And you can also write yourself a card. This one says, I, I am doing this. Uh, my goal for decluttering is so I can find things that I want in 30 seconds or less. So maybe you could carry something like this around with you as well when you are decluttering. Just to remind you, when it gets tough, when it gets sentimental, this is what it's all about, just to keep it in mind. So a summary, we're going to have a little, a few minutes to share. Don't forget, what's been your the best tip today? What's been the most confronting and um, what have I missed? Let me know. There's still time. Share in the chat. So in summary today, beware of the temptation to collect more keepsakes and memorabilia. Be really mindful when you're out and about. Start decluttering something small, one shelf, one drawer. Keep up the momentum. 
and um, keep moving. 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes twice a day, one bag a week. You can do it. Sort like items together, maybe by the time as in the, the year, the country that you went to, the family member, or by the, uh, the artist that did the artwork. Start sorting it can really, as I said, help you see what you've got. And maybe you've got this massive pile and you go, ah, oh, how many stick figures of cats and dogs do I need? I'll just keep one special one. And how about the idea of letting go of duplicates? Like we just said, we don't need a whole pile. Gifts you never liked, have a go at letting go of them. Uh, donate baby clothes to children in need. As I said, what's sentimental to you could be useful to somebody else. And set a limit as to what you'll keep. We had that nice little uh, tote bag, more like a suitcase, uh, decorated with um, some of your ticket stubs and those sorts of things. Set a limit on what you keep. Uh, display items you love and cherish. Don't put them back in the cupboard. Store photos in a photo sensitive box by decade and label it um, and making it easy. I, I did do this recently with a client. We almost ended up with just small photos and big photos. Uh, and she was happy with that. At least they weren't jumbled all over the house. They were in two boxes. That was, that was the loose photos that we found. I think there was more in the house, but that's what we had time to do on the day. Use labels and containers to make it easy to find things and to put them back uh, to where the item is living in its permanent home. Return things to their permanent homes as soon as you have used them. So this is really talking about daily maintenance. How can we start to get ourselves sorted and not continue to add to the piles of things around your home? Uh, really start to um, do what organised people do and as I said, don't just dump, do something with that. So here are our upcoming events. We'd love to see you at one of the next one. Um, just before I flip onto that, thank you, Mary Lou. She says, I love this, sort the stuff. Kids, school, artwork, schoolwork and artwork can be really rewarding. I will do this with my son's school stuff. It's a great way to keep things organised and preserve those special memories. Thanks, Julie. You're welcome, Mary Lou. Thank you. Um, so yeah, hopefully that has been helpful for you. Again, share what has been most in helpful for you today. In two weeks time on the 12th of September, we are going to run through the same six steps of the space and time organizing system. And we're going to declutter your paperwork. So if you've got piles of paper around your home, we'd love to see you at this one. Um, and help you start to tackle some of those piles. And the one after that in almost a month's time, we've got a new one. I can't wait to uh, present this one is decluttering your life with AI. So we're going to be talking about chat GPT um, specifically, but how can we get organized and get the important things done by using AI? I hope it's uh, might be enticing and interesting to you. This is going to be about making life more simple, getting the important things done, making it easy to do so that you can just get on with the important things in your life. Oh, come on, click through to the next one. And a special offer to you. I said uh, I would love you to continue this journey. So if you're interested in a 15-minute strategy call, send me an email, julie at spaceandtime.com.au. Let's have another chat on Zoom, just 15 minutes talking about you and how can we make a plan specifically for you. It's going to be, um, this has been very general today, of course. We've done a few little examples of people that have been joining us today, but let's look just what you're doing. Uh, and if you're in Melbourne and you need hands-on decluttering experience, would love to help, not experience, hands-on decluttering help, let me know. Um, it's me or someone in my team uh, can help you out. So let me have a look at the chat. I'm going to stop my share. Go back to the chat and the chat says, 
Thank you, Mary Lou, for sharing the links to the new, uh, the two upcoming workshops, Declutter Paperwork and Decluttering Your Life with AI. So jump on Eventbrite and register for them. Linda says, I'll need to sort before deciding what to keep and what to let go of. Amen, Linda. I love it. That is so true. Sort it out and then go from there. It's just, you know, get the cards out, get the schoolwork out, get the whatever's out, get it out. Um, sort it out and then go from there and just do it in 10 minute blocks is really helpful because sometimes this stuff can be a little bit overwhelming for us so do 10 minutes go off and hang out the washing which reminds me I need to do that in a minute hang out do the washing come back um, and then have another go at it just keep sorting and keep wading your way through it thanks Mary Lou for putting the um a link there if anyone would like a chat find a time that suits in my calendar let's have a chat about it don't forget before you go tell me what the most useful tip was today thank you holly she says thank you wonderful webinar what specifically did you like best holly would love to hear your thoughts um and if i said if you're in australia in melbourne and you need some hands-on help there's a link there for Meet the Team so you can check out our people. So, yeah, let's, I'll give one more minute. Let us know what the most important thing was and if there was anything I missed, let me know. Oh, yeah, I had, while you're doing that, I had these books beside me that a client gave me to bring home. They are travel magazines that her friend snuck into her bag my client's friend knows that my client is on a decluttering journey and tries really hard not to bring more things into the home, but she's trying to inspire her to go traveling. Oh, this is, come on, where are we? There we are. And she snuck these four magazines into her bag. My client is a very great lady. She says, I don't need them. I don't want them. And I've got them so I can use them for one of my focus board workshops that I'll be running in person soon. Um, but she really didn't want to bring them home. She didn't, you know, she really is trying very hard to stop more stuff. Holly says, I like the part of looking at keepsakes and realizing they are not our loved ones you are you are so true holly thank you for sharing that love it all right let's wrap up um we are a few minutes under time which is great go out there and start sorting your memorabilia um or jump on some of those links um and book your space at the next workshop or make a time to chat with me been awesome seeing you all thanks for joining us from all around the world uh, look forward to seeing you at the next one bye for now Thanks, Julie. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.